Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Just checking that you can all hear me, make sure that the sound is coming across clearly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah good. all good. Okay. So may I present to you um, Polaris Aquatic, it's a swimming company um, where the presentation I'm gonna show you is about the uh, work that we've done in between and around the pandemic. Uh, just make sure that, yeah, it's responding. So our aim is to allow families and, and encourage more families to bond together through sport. And because I work in swimming, I've been working in swimming, I taught families effectively Grenfell uh, Tower Fire. Um, this was an opportunity to actually give back the only way that I knew I could in Kensington. So we would normally be training in a facility called Swim Farm in the West Way. This is Rachel teaching our brother and sister. And for the first time they're working together, they don't usually, uh, mum finds it difficult, even uh, in normal times uh, for the children to bond without having some sort of conflict at certain times, just because of the way sibling rivalry can be when you grow up. But in, in most cases, we would have a facility like this for um, lessons, 30 minute lessons, um, fitness training, so very specifically built pool with an engine. So over the, uh, the break, um, we managed to start up um, the course, which we'd introduced so that we could have teachers delivering swimming lessons within the community. And in actual fact, we had discussed with Kensington Leisure Centre, you know, how we would use their facility, um, where they would allocate the space for us to go, and uh, to make this a more of a permanent option, um, bringing the community project back to the community centre. Um, and the way that I was able to do this is to make sure that we could always go in and access um, the area. So now it's been changed, you have to go through reception, um, and walk through into the pool side. And obviously the bather loads and other capacities have changed also. So we're quite restricted in the way that we um, organize the sessions. So they, they refuse mm. to pay extra money either to make, to get an assistant teacher. One what class. I did is that I put on some classes online and um, we found that we weren't able to deliver those sessions um, as we planned to. So instead I put them online for the families as well. And so you've got just a picture on the side where some of those families were able to join us. Um, and I put this out really for the children because we found that when I contacted a lot of the parents, they were um, finding it difficult to manage homeschooling, uh, working from home, and having something for the children to work on that was part of their school curriculum. So here's just an example of some of the activities they did. Like a star, and they come back together so your ankles are touching. So we're gonna do eight breaths, ready? <sighs> One, keep um, going. Some families worked at home with their parents too. So the parents would allow them to uh, demonstrate some of the actions like, you know, lying on a chair and doing the arms for back crawl. Uh, where they had space to, I asked that we do a demonstration for dolphin kicks. And without having access to water, these were the spectacular demonstrations that people did to the best of their knowledge. And in particularly, I really enjoyed the young one in the corner, in the top corner. So what he's done is he's found a space, uh, just checking that you can still hear me. Yeah, we can. Yeah, the PowerPoint's paused for a moment, so I'm hoping that it will come back on. Um, but what he's done is he's found a space in his room. And in order to show the undulating action for um, the dolphin kick, he decides to move his younger cousin out of the way and then jump and land on his tummy. Excuse me, the, the PowerPoint presentation has crashed. So give me just a moment and I'll try to reset this. So um, as, he's, as he's demonstrating those actions, we, we look back and we think, you know, it was great to sit down with those families that made that time, that introduced um, children from the age of five years old up to 12 year olds to join us online. 
And it was great that the 12 year olds were just as active and just as involved in the sessions and were just as encouraging to their siblings or to their family members um, as they were for themselves. So if I just return back to the slide, just checking that you can see it again. Yep, we can see that. Okay, brilliant. So it might be that the uh, the slide is, is taking up too much memory and I apologize if it, if it slows down again, but um, you can see one is trying to demonstrate a dance move. I didn't mean butterfly the dance move. Um, another one is in the top corner, um, just trying to show how to do a dolphin kick in the form of a landing on his bed, which I just, I thought was hilarious. It was so great. Um, at the same time, we'd done uh, rules. So we'd asked the children to set up um, what sort of rules should we have on the pool side and just really start to bring back the uh, responsibility um, and an awareness of how to be safe in water, even though they're not in the water. And then again, um, families would go through demonstrations. Your legs have got to be together. No, you're bending at your knees. Arrows. Long legs, pointy Weakly. toes. Weakly. That's oh, it. You better you're not pointy. Point your legs. So Point you'll your hear toes. the accent, um, and that was as a result of going up to Birmingham. The, the crazy hot tub. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. When they, me and Michael were sitting in a hot tub waiting for Caleb to bring the toys into the hot tub um, and then... Uh, reading stories, uh, creating stories, creative writing, testimonials, lots of pictures, um, some great uh, just demonstrations of what they were doing. So um, just moving on to how we how we manage this program. So. Um, at one point we were gazumped, I, I was mentioning this in the um, presentation earlier, we were gazumped in, in Kensington during the lockdown. Um, it was a very desperate time for many people. And so in order for me to uh, just, just to stay active and to provide the opportunities that I wanted, I ended up running up to uh, the North, running up to West Bromwich in Birmingham to deliver some sessions. And um, as an aquatic tutor, I'm in a position where I can train up swimming teachers and train up other aquatic professionals. And it introduced me to people in this picture. So this is one family member whose younger daughter um, is going to Jamaica. This person is Adele. She's the um, ex-GB national synchro swimmer, performed in uh, two Olympic games with Katie and also the founding director of Aquabatics. And when they saw what we were doing, they were inspired to help, especially with the Grenfell. And then in the other corner, you have the Jamaican national um, team representative. She's also a referee, Maureen. And she's uh, quite happy to set up um, exchanges for people who want to come in and teach, which is where um, Kijay, so Keisha is Kijay's mom, uh, will be introducing her to go and do those lessons. And ultimately, our plan is to make sure that we can get more families bonding together. Um, there's a health aspect to this, a mental health aspect to this. Um, it's about the mobility, um, increasing access for those people who may be overlooked, that may not um, see the pool for various reasons. Um, we also make sure that we're providing uh, the PPE at one stage in, the, in between the lockdown. We still had lessons in Kensington for those members that desperately needed it. And then finally, we've been seeking support of the larger community. So the National Governing Body for Swimming, this is um, Dave Candler, Zoe Cooper, the National Governing Body for Swimming in the STA. And this is Harley Hicks, who is possibly one of the most awarded shooters we used to work together um, previously. So I've amassed some support. This is not even the beginning of it. Um, but what I should do is possibly leave some links to where you can find a little bit more about the story. Um, and if you would like to, uh, some contact details to see how we're getting on. That was lovely, Annalise. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay, so now open to you guys to ask any questions you've got of Annalise. Just well, take yourself well. off mute and there you go. Off you go, Robert. Oh, it's always me, isn't it? But as you get older, you 
we'd never stopped talking. Um, wow. I, f um, I was just wondering, I never say her name right. And I was talking to her this afternoon and I see her most days because she lives near me. Samaria, correct me, Susan. She's got the other swimming project. Samaria. 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 Sarunia from Sarunia. I always say her name wrong. Um, and she's got, so I didn't realize there were two swimming projects. I, I, all I can say is just, it's amazing. And uh, water is so healing. It really is. Um, I, I, I've, I've, I, I, fantastic. Yeah. Wow. Definitely. I, don't, I can't even think of a question. I just, really. Well, that's <laughs> nice. It's nice to have a well, comment. Yeah. Just, wow. just wow. Well done. Well, well done. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Moving. <laughs> um, just just to give you some idea of, of what this has taken. So um, over the time that we've been um, running these sessions, I've been running Polaris Aquatic um, as a private business for about six years. Um, I used to work for the larger corporate companies that really have the biggest swim school. And now I'm returning to them with my own business to request a space that we can have this permanently. And especially when the Grenfell uh, date comes, the anniversary comes, we can gather the, the, the friendship, gather the, the, um, the, the community, uh, gather the aquatic professionals who maybe didn't have a chance to be on this program, who possibly want to show a message and, and just show their, their love and support of this. And um, if we can all come together at one time to make this event really impactful, I would have had many people involved, but because of COVID, we want to be careful. Um, but I want this to be as impactful as it can be. So I appreciate the support. Mm. lovely thank you mm. anybody else in the group want to ask a, a question or got a comment they want to share um actually i i wanted to say kind of another that was so impressive and um you know to actually go online and teach swimming online is just it's amazing it's really amazing uh because it was kind of something that um i mean i don't know how we would have been able to have kind of like taught cycling online i know that you can have spin classes and that kind of thing but that's that's not really what what we do and i just it was really impressive yeah yeah and great yeah, i mean just a really brilliant way to kind of like keep the community together you know just a really brilliant mm. outreach thank you uh, okay so any other questions or comments All right. Well, I mean, once again, we're listening to some amazing projects run by the community, for the community, with the community. And that's exactly what participatory budgeting is about, really. It's about saying there are plenty of people out there that know how to do this really, really well. And they could spend public budgets really, really well. And you're just evidence to all of that. And so it's just a pleasure again to work with such great people and hear the kind of projects that you're progressing against all odds really and how innovative everybody's been you know in such in such a difficult year so well done everybody i look forward to hearing more next time um okay so if there's nothing else to say then it is just a big well done and have a lovely evening enjoy the rest of the sunshine because i think it's going cold again tomorrow so you can enjoy it now for the last hour or so and we'll see you next time. Chagall. Thank you very much. See you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone. Just you and I. <clears throat> Again. Okay.